Hi guys, welcome to Java Tutorials. Let's see the features of Java, which is one, one of the important concepts in Java. So first one is compiled and interpreted. This is one of the important feature, compiled and interpreted. If you take any language, it can be either compilable or interpretable. Either it can be either compiled or interpreted. For example, if you take C language, it is a compiled language. If you take JavaScript, it is an interpreted language. If you take VB script, it is an interpreted language. If it is, if you take C++, it's a compiled language. But Java combines both the concepts. First one is compiled and second one is interpreted. So it's a two-step system. So first Java compiler compiles the source code into bytecode instructions. So bytecodes are nothing but they are machine instructions that can be understood by the system directly. Okay, in the second step, what Java interpreter does is it converts the bytecode into machine language that is system understandable code called binary code. Okay, in the second step, what Java does, it converts the bytecode into system understandable code called binary code or machine code. So by this, we can say that by this two step system, we can say that Java is both compiled and interpreted language okay and the second one is platform independent so this is one of the most unique and important feature of java over the other languages so when a java file is compiled the compiler generates an executable file called dot class file i repeat once again when a java file is compiled the compiler generates an executable file called dot class file this dot class file contains bytecode so what dot class file contains it contains a bytecode so what is a bytecode bytecode is nothing but it's a set of instructions it's a set of instructions we call it as a bytecode so what uh, uh, it's giving instructions to whom it's giving instruction to the jvm so the bytecode is nothing but it's a set of instructions and the bytecode generated in one platform can be executed in any platform I repeat once again, this is one of the important points to be noted. Bytecode generated on one platform can be executed on any platform. So by this, by this concept, we can say that Java is a platform independent. Okay. And the third one is object oriented. So Java is a truly object oriented language. Okay. Java is a truly object oriented language. Everything in Java is an object. Everything in Java is an object. All the programming code and data are enclosed within a class declaration. All the programming code and data are enclosed within a class declaration. So Java API comes with set of classes and packages. We can use these classes by importing them and inheriting them. The object model in Java is very simple and easily extensible. Okay. And the fourth one is robust. So why in this, uh, what is Java, why, what do you, first of all, what do you mean by robust? Okay, robust means it's a kind of secured and uh, it's a, it, we can, we can say robust as in secure and reliable. Okay, so Java is a robust language. Why Java is a robust language? Because memory is implicitly managed here. So memory is implicitly managed. If we take C++ or C, we need to use malloc and cloc to free the memory. Uh, for the allocation of the memory and deallocation of the memory, use malloc, cloc, all those functions. But if we take Java, we have an inbuilt memory management system which is called as a garbage collection. So Java has a unique concept called garbage collection. So this, what this garbage collection does is, it deallocates the memory for the objects that are not used in the program. It deallocates the memory. It deallocates the memory which is not referenced in the program. Okay, by this concept we can say Java is in robust. And the another concept is like exception handling. So we can handle errors at runtime, thus eliminating the risk of system crash. We can handle the errors at runtime, thus eliminating the risk of system crash by using the concept called exception handling. By using these two concepts, we can say Java is a robust. Okay. And the next one is distributed. 
Java supports distributed communication. Java supports distributed communication. So in Java, we have a concept called RMI, which is a remote method invocation. In Java, we have a concept called RMI, which is a remote method invocation, which supports distributed communication. By using RMI concept, different Java systems can collaborate each other. Next, simple and small. Java is a simple language to practice. Java is a simple language to practice. And many features of C and C++ that are not required for, that are not required or deleted in Java. For example, Java does not use pointers, preprocessor header files, go to statements, etc. It also eliminates, uh, it also deleted the concept called operator overloading and multiple inheritance, virtual functions, etc, etc. Okay, Java is a familiar language. Java is a familiar language. Why, why it is a familiar? Because uh, C and C++ program doesn't find that much difficult to learn Java because it already had the concepts like same concepts like data types, control structures, etc. And next one is multi-threaded. Next one is multi-threaded. Handling multiple tasks simultaneously is called multi-threading. So what is multi-threading? Handling multiple tasks simultaneously is called multi-threading. Java supports multi-threaded programs. Java supports multiple thread, multi-threaded programs. A process, a process can be divided into number of threads and each thread can give a different task to perform. Okay, what uh, Java does is it divides the process into multiple threads and each thread will take one task and perform the task. So developing multi-threaded programs in Java is very simple due to the inbuilt classes available in Java. Developing multi-threaded programs is very simple in Java due to inbuilt classes available in Java. Next one is dynamic and extensible and the other one is high performance. So Java runs slower due to conversion of bytecode into executable code called binary code. So what Java does at backend, as I told you, it converts the bytecode to executable code called binary code. So every time whenever it is doing this process, it takes some time. Okay, it takes some time. So in order to avoid this time, what we do is uh, we have a concept called JIT, which is a just-in-time compiler, which improves the execution time of Java applications, which improves the concept of, which improves the execution time of Java applications. We'll see more in detail about JIT in coming tutorials. And the last one is dynamic and extensible. So Java is a dynamic language. Java is a dynamic language. At runtime, it can link with standard libraries, classes, objects, and methods. At runtime, it can link with standard libraries, classes, objects, and methods. So these are all the important features of Java. Hope you guys understand this video. Thanks for watching my video. If you like my video, don't forget to subscribe to my video.